Yes, Jesus. He looked beyond all my flesh, all my sins, all my filthiness. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame upon your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, and my shame upon your love. You look beyond me, beyond me, oh. You will be on me, oh. Lord, I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy, oh God. You have shown me mercy. You pass my sin. Who pass my sin, my guilt. And pour your love. You look beyond me, you look beyond me. Oh, you look past my sin. Oh, you look beyond me. Oh, you look beyond me, Jesus. Oh, you look past my sin. Jesus, you look beyond me. Father, you look beyond me. Oh, I'm the MD, MD one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the very one that you have shown mercy. Oh, you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. I'm the little girl that lost sheep lost in sin and filled. On all the years you pour your love. You pour your love on me. I was naked and cold. I needed covering fashion to your taste yes you have clothed me in your righteousness alone you look past my sin my guilt my shame and pour your love you look beyond me oh you look beyond me oh you look past my sin sin my guilt my shame for your love, you look beyond me. You look beyond me. Oh, you look past my sin, my guilt, my shame upon you, Lord Jesus. You look beyond me. You look beyond. Say I'm the M D M D world. I'm the you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. If you know God has shown you, has shown, has shown you mercy, say. He has shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy, Jesus. I'm the very one that you fall mercy. Oh, you have shown me mercy. Oh, you have shown me mercy. I'm the very one that you have shown. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Have you ever thought in a minute that where would your life be without God? Probably we would have been the prostitute in the street or the, the drug addict or the thief. But his mercy located us. Yes, Jesus. Where would I have been without God in my life? 
It's only by him that he has shown me mercy. Oh, say I am the one, I am the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You are, I'm the very one that Lord you show. I'm the one that you have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Oh. Where would I have been if you had not been by my side? How could I rise to meet the morning of the day? Your tender mercy always calling from behind. At times I could not see you, even though you were close by. And Lord, you are good. You are good and your mercy forever and yours. And Lord, you are good. You are good and your mercy forever and yours. We say, Lord, and Lord, you are good every day. Even this morning, you were good. You are still good. Oh, we will say, Lord, Lord, you are good in our families, in our families, in the church forever and your we say lord and lord you are good you are good and your mercy forever and your and your mercy forever and your and your mercy Forever and your and your mercy and your mercy forever and yours and your mercy forever and yours. God is so good to us. That's why we want to praise Him this morning. He keeps doing wonders, 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 wonders in our lives. Hallelujah. Can I hear your hands? Come on. You did do wonder, hey. You did do wonder. You turned my life around. Give me a brand new song. You did do wonder. Jesus, you did do. You did do wonder. You did do. You did do You turned my life around. Give me a brand new song. You did do wonder. Jesus, you did do wonder. You did do the do. You turn my life around. Give me a brand new You did do wonder. Jesus, you did do wonder. You did do In my life. You turn, you turn my life around. You turn my life around. Give me a brand new song. You did do wonder. Ah, hey, this guy. Ah, hey, this guy God, 
Another one in no day. Are you really sure? So his blood wash all my sins. I believe. I believe. Say my shame is taken away. My shame is taken away. All my pain. My pain is healed in I believe. I believe. I believe. I So his blood wash all my sins. I believe. Can I hear you say? I believe. Say my shame is taken. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed. My pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I raise. I raise the bar. My God has conquered the grave, my Redeemer, oh, he lives. Oh, my Redeemer, oh, my Redeemer, he lives, he lives, he lives. Oh, my Redeemer, he lives, I'm free, he lives, I'm here. That's why I'm dancing. My oh, that's why I'm clapping. My redeemer. My redeemer. Oh, my redeemer. He's the creator of all universe. And there's nothing he cannot change. Neither is there anything he cannot do. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus, see Creator, what can't you do? What can't you do? What can't you do? Jesus, we see name above every other 
other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? What can't you change? We say creator. He's creator of the universe. Oh, what can't you do? There is nothing, 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 nothing he cannot change. Oh, what can't you change, Jesus? What can't you change, Jesus? Say you are able, great and mighty God. Oh, you are able, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, you are able, Jesus. You are the great. Oh, you are able, Lord. You're the great and mighty God. You are able, able. One more time. is able he is able can you tell that problem that my God is able 
He's a God that does impossibility. He that is able to walk upon the sea. I don't know the words you want to use this morning to describe the greatness of your God. I don't know what you want to tell him. I don't know the words of love you want to whisper to his ears. He has been able to deliver us. What he did on the cross of Calvary is the mighty work that anyone would have done. He is able to heal. He is able to deliver. He is able to set free. He is able to heal. If you are depressed, the Lord is able to, to give you peace this morning. He is able to comfort. He is able to help you. He is able to lead you the right path. Because there is nothing he cannot do. He has Jesus. And I will not be silent. And I will always worship you. Jesus. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. See, I will not be silent. I will not be silent. Are we always worship you? Sing as long as I live, as long as I am breathing. Are we always worship? Because this is my worship, all of my worship, he is my worship, all of my worship, can we give him our all, he is my worship, all of my worship. All of my world, here is my worship, here is my worship, all of my worship, all of my world, here is my worship, here is my world, all of my worship. This is my worship. We bring our all to him. All of my worship. That's why I say, I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as you live, as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Can we give the Lord a clap unto him? He deserves our worship even through our hands. Can we give him a mighty hand, a mighty hand, a mighty hand? He deserves a shout of victory this morning. He deserves a shout of glory this morning. He deserves a shout of acclamation this morning. He is worthy of all our praise. 
In Jesus' name, we have worship. I pray our worship will be acceptable and has been accepted by the living God in Jesus' name. This morning, service is not as usual. We are going to be listening to our superiors, our regional overseer from the Deeper Life Young Adult Singles Retreat, all the way from Kingston, North Carolina. And I believe that the Lord is going to bless somebody here today in Jesus' name. Uh, before we do, we're supposed to listen to our choir give us their song. Uh, choristers, are you ready? It doesn't seem like our choristers, are they ready? Because we are a few minutes to linking up with North Carolina. But I think if you're ready, you're going to be running like soldiers and coming up to give us your wonderful rendition before we link up with North Carolina. And I believe that God is going to bless everyone this morning in Jesus' name. Can I hear a louder amen? Can you give an amen to the Lord? And say it like you mean it. Say to the living God, Amen.
Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Tell your neighbor the hour has come. You don't sound excited and expectant. The hour has come. The word of God is going to be coming live to us. But before that, it's my honor and privilege to be able to introduce the man of God that God will use for us today. Um, our next speaker is not just a speaker, but he's our host, like you know. He can kick us out right now. Um, he's a man who needs no introduction because his reputation precedes him. He's a man who has enslaved himself to the work of the gospel. He strives for excellence and his no-nonsense mindset has made him popular in the youth and young adult ministry. He's currently on a missionary tour with focus in the continent of Asia. By the grace of God, in, ad in uh, addition to overseeing over 80 churches in the mid-Atlantic, southeast, southwest region, God has so used him to pioneer the work of God in the Philippines. Can you hear you clapping to the glory of God? And by the grace of God, whatever he touches always prospers. The work of the ministry keeps expanding like rapid fire. He's a well-rounded man, not just a father, but a leader. Not just a leader, but a mentor to many. He's a role model to generations. He's an epitome of selflessness and humility. There is no better man to show us the pathway to the next talk that we have, the message we have. There is no better man to show us the guideline to becoming a complete man, a total man. And I want you to rise on your feet and join me as we welcome no other person than our friend, our teacher, the apostle of apostles, the man and army of God for the hour. God's own general, our regional overseer, Pastor Michael Dada. Before you take your seat, I want to congratulate you for being part of Eden 2024. Without any doubt, this year's singles retreat is excellent Toto Bonikaka. I saw God moved in an unprecedented way yesterday morning and tears were coming down from my eyes. I saw God using many of you in doing 
great exploit for the kingdom of our master. And the Lord ministered to me yesterday morning. If you listen carefully when I was running out the prayer, I was not just speaking. I was talking about what was ministered to me. That from among you are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, miracle workers, missionaries, in Jesus' name. Get ready. Because God is taking you to places. God is just beginning with you. Don't worry about what has happened or what is happening. Look beyond your current situation and see a glorious end awaiting you. I will meet you on the mountain. You are not coming down. You are going up higher and higher and higher and higher in Jesus' name. Let me quickly share this with you. I don't have too much time. My message has not started. Once we hear, let us pray, then the sermon is starting. So I'm going to entertain you for the next 30 to 45 minutes before we start the sermon. How about that? We should be able to do, to, we should be done with the sermon by 3 p.m. today. Somebody say amen. 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 Way back in the 80s, you are going out to places. The Lord will say to you. Amen. Last year, I was talking with a, a particular national overseer. And I was saying, yes, sir. And he said, sir, don't tell me, yes, sir, I am your son. And then I couldn't remember again. He told me the years and how he was under my leadership. I am telling you. If you will pay attention to all that we are telling you and teaching you, the Lord will take you up higher. There will be challenges. There will trials. There will be temptations. But please pay attention. You will overcome. Do not say, I am a woman. For the Bible says, in the last days, I'll pour out of my spirit upon I can't hear somebody. I can't hear somebody. All flesh. So whether you're a man or you're a woman, be ready for the move of God in your life. Because whether you're a man or woman, you will lay your hands upon the sick and they will recover. Man or woman, in the name of the Lord, you will cast out devils and demons. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Amen. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Amen. Because you were made complete by the God of heaven. And that is why today we'll be talking about the total man. The word man is generic. Whether you say man or woman, there is a man in the woman. You understand? There is a man in all of us. By divine arrangement. So get ready. Get ready for the next call for your life. The total man. Let us pray. Father, we thank and bless you for the age and the dispensation in which we are living. The dispensation of the manifestation of the presence and the power and the glory of the Almighty. We thank you for the great revelation of your plan and purpose for our lives. We thank you for your children that are willing and ready to take the bull by the horn and run. Use this mouth of clay to be a blessing to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you so much. You may have your seat. At this moment, we are looking at the subject of the total man. The total man. Somebody say the total man. I can hear somebody. Can you say it better? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may have your seat. At this moment, we are looking at the subject of the total man. The total man. Somebody say the total man. I can hear somebody. When we talk about the total man, we're talking about somebody that was made in the image of God. And please understand, yes, as human, there are human limitations. Well, because of the nature and the life of sin that our father, Adam and Eve brought upon us, Eve, our mother. But then Christ came and gave us life in abundance beyond our imagination. That it means what was ordinarily generally made available to all men is now limited to the children of the almighty God. And so if you are a child of God, what we lost in Eden, we have regained in Christ. I know the thought that I think towards you. Hallelujah. Parents always think for their children. Fathers and mothers does not wait for their children to cry before they provide their food. Fathers and mothers does not wait for their children to cry before they clothe them, before they accommodate them, before they take care of them, before they send them to school, before they think and plan for their future. There was this particular man I read about. Lord has you in mind, had a plan for you, had a purpose for your life. From the very beginning of his way, of his plan, and of his purpose. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thought that I think towards you. Hallelujah. Parents always think for their children. Fathers and mothers does not to buy me this, to buy me that. Why is he always wearing an underwear that has holes? So one day, he summoned courage and confronted the father. Dad, I realize that you always wear this underwear with hole. And the father adjusted his seat. And the father <coughs> cleared his throat. And then the father leaned forward. And the father said, does your own underwear have hole? And the child said, no, dad. The dad said, all that matters to me now is to be sure that everything is fine with you. It's not about me. To be fine about your future. I said that to say, we have the father who is thinking about us planning for us and has made everything available for us. Unlike that father of the boy, our own father does not have any underwear with hole. I need an amen for that. He has everything in stock. So anything we need, we are complete in him. He said, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, the thought of peace and not of evil, to bring you and expected end, to give you an expected end. Daniel, chapter 11, verse 32. And as such, as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flattery. The latter part of it says, but, somebody say but, somebody say but, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do Exploit, exploit. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. 
But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. I need an amen there. And they shall walk and not faint. That is the word of God for you. The Lord is saying that everything you need to succeed in life, to survive in life, to prosper in life, he has given them to you. He has made them available unto you. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 verse 10. And ye are complete in him. I need an amen there. And ye are complete in him. Total man. Nothing missing. Nothing lacking. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. The word total, the total man, represents the sum up. It means the complete. It means the entirety and the entirety. It means a perfect state, a whole all the additions of something. The total man implies all that God created you for and intended for you to be in life. The total man is the man that will never lack anything in any way. The total man is the man that will showcase the glory of the almighty God. And you are that total man. You a that total woman. I look at three points. Number one, the exposition of a total man. You know, the problem in life is a problem of identity. Many people are not aware of who they are. And because they do not know their identity, they always want to be this one, want to be that person, want to be that person, want to be that person but themselves. You are unique in your own way. You are special in the way God has created you. You were made for a purpose. You were created to fulfill a vacuum in life. Stop comparing yourself with anybody in life. Amen. The exposition of a torture man. Look at yourself in the mirror of the word of God. The Bible says God created man in his own image. Look at that image of the almighty God. Look at yourself in the mirror of God, not in the mirror of man. And do know that man changes from time to time. Man changes based on the situations and the circumstances surrounding them. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Look at it again, Proverbs 8.22. God possessed me in the beginning of his way. Me, somebody say me. For as long as you keep looking at somebody else, you will miss the point. God possessed me at the beginning or in the beginning of his way. So then, understand the world is waiting for you. The world is waiting for your manifestation. The world is waiting for you to be who God has ordained for you to be. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 19 that the entire, the index expectation of creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And of course, the daughters of God. The world is waiting for your manifestation. Ask yourself, what would have happened to the world if I were not born? That should help you to know that you were born for a purpose. You were created for a purpose. What would have happened to the world without me? What would have happened to my environment without me? What would have happened to my family without me? 
to fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. So we look at the perfect picture of the total man under that revelation, under that exposition, the exposition of a total man. The Lord created you in his own image. And I want to say that again and again and again in his image. If you don't remember anything, just remember the image of God. The image of God. And begin to our life. John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are going to be the total man, you must possess the totality of the spirit of God, the totality of the image of God, the totality of the nature of God, the totality of the life of God. And that cannot happen except you are born again. That's why I said what we lost in Eden, we regain back in Christ Jesus. The authority we lost in Eden, we got it back in Christ Jesus. Behold, I give unto you serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, the carnal man does not have that power. A sinful man does not have that power, only to the saints in Christ Jesus. That is why it is not enough for you to just come to church. It's not enough for you to just know the verses of the Bible or how to pray. No, you must be in Christ. Your life must be in Christ, and the nature of God, the life of God must be inside of you. First Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. The perfect picture. But here he choosing generation. I need their name in there. That tells me that I am not just an ordinary person. I am not just a nobody. I am specially selected, specially chosen, appointed, elected. You are a choosing generation. A royal priesthood. Royalty. Is in my DNA and in an amen. An holy nation, a peculiar people that tells me as a total man, I am unique. I'm not trying to copy this one or copy that one. I want to be distinctively different in my own way. Because God created me different. Amen. Haven't you realized that I speak different from you? Haven't you, haven't you discovered that even I have bald hair that you don't have? Amen. My height is different from your height. So, understand how unique you are. You are peculiar in the sight of the Lord. And your life is to show forth the presence of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I want to remind you again that you are complete in Christ Jesus. And so 2 Peter chapter 1 tells us, verses 3 and 4, that as according as his divine power, he has given unto us all things, somebody say all things, that pertains unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Please look up here. Because we are complete in him, our calling is a call to glory. Receiving it in Jesus' name. That this, by this, ye might be partakers of divine nature. That's the perfect nature I'm talking about. Divine nature. So then, understand that you are an exemplary inspiration to your generation. Your generation should be admiring you. Make yourself unique, distinct, and different from others. Do something different that is different from what the common world is doing. You are an exemplary inspiration. You are an environmental influence. Let, instead of you copying the world, if imitating the world, let the world begin to copy and imitate you and in an amen there. You are an evangelistic involvement. Get involved in the things of the Lord, in the saving of souls, in serving the Lord. You are ecclesiastically invaluable. In the kingdom of God, in the church of the living God, 
make yourself unique and different and special. As we look at this revelation again, the exposition of the total man, I look also at the precious, or sorry, the perilous position of a trapped man. I told you the perfect picture. Now, somebody that is trapped. The position of a trapped man. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means a sinful man is not complete. A sinful man does not have the spirit of God. Does not have the fear of God. Does not have the presence of God. Does not have the power of the Lord. There. It's not complete. It's not total. That is the deprivation of divine glory. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death, spiritual death, physical death, financial death, social death, eternal death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, when you come to Christ, there is a gift that comes up unto you. For he has given unto us all that pertains unto life and the godliness. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. Oh, oh. I refuse sonship with the devil. I renounce every relationship with Satan. I am not a child of the devil. I am a child of the living God. I have the DNA of God in me. I have the power of the Almighty in me. Amen. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Every work of the devil in your life today shall be destroyed. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you. That he will not hear you. Now, there you see alienation from God. There you see an unanswered prayer. There you see a blockage. In the life and the part of a sinful man who is not complete, who is not total in Christ Jesus. First John, an unanswered prayer. There will you see a blockage in the life and the part of a sinful man who is not complete, who is not total in Christ Jesus. First John, chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and homongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all I can hear somebody and all uh, uh, how can you be a liar and still say you are a child of God how can you be a liar and still say you are a Christian? How can you be a liar and you should say eternity is reserved for you in heaven? No. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. May you not experience the second death in Jesus' name. Ah, uh ah. -uh. First Corinthians chapter 6 tells us from verse 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor idolaters, nor, nor, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves. You steal by pen. You steal by internet. You steal in different ways. You steal money directly. Nor drunkards, nor revilers. No extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you before. I pray that to be your position in Jesus' name. 
that kind of life will be your past life. He says, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. And everybody say, Amen. Psalm 66, verse 18, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. We've seen the perfect picture. We've seen the perilous position. Is there any way out? Providential pathway of a transformed man. There is a way out. That is why Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. John 14, 6 says, this is Jesus speaking. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Nobody comes unto the Father but by me. That is the way to the Father. That is the way to this life of totality in Christ on the things on the earth. On the things on the earth. So, under this exposition, of the total man, we'll see the nature of God. We'll see the problem of man, and we'll see the way out of the problem back to the root of the Almighty for us. That is a true exposition. Understand, a man in sin, a woman in sin is not complete. No matter the accomplishment call, a universal call, a global call, a communal call, Family call, familiar call, and a personal call. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28, come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. May you receive the rest of God in Jesus' name. And when you come unto him and you get that rest, and you get that new life, then he will test you, set who you are in Christ. You know you are not a sinner. You know you are not alienated from God. You know you are not a child of the devil. You know you are not a wanderer. You know you are someone that gets the, 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 the ears of the almighty God. When you pray, he answers. Remember, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know that you are a child of God. You have the DNA of God in, your, in, in you. What then were you created for? Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before you were born, I have called you. I have ordained you a minister to the nation. You were created for a purpose. Before Abraham, I was. I have been with the father as a workman. You were sent to the world for a purpose. The exploit of a total man. Now that you are complete in him, you are a co-laborer side by side with Christ Jesus. The exploit of a total man. What are you to accomplish in life? What are you to do in life? Know yourself. Know who you are. I told you the problem of man is identity problem. If you don't know who you are, you will never be able to know what you have. If you don't know what you have, you will never be able to know what you can accomplish with what you have. You have God in your life. You have the word of God. You have the spirit of God. You have the power of God. You have the presence of God. You have the promises of God. You have the provisions of God in your life. What then can you do with all of this? These things are not just there for you. To stock up and never use. Make use of all that God has done for you. And shine. Somebody say shine. The Bible says, arise and shine. For the light is come. For the glory, the glory, the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Daniel eleven thirty two 32 again. And such as do wickedly against the covenant child, he corrupt with flatteries. You are not in that category. He said, but the people, the people, the brother, the sister, the man, the woman, the Christian man, the Christian woman, the people that do know their God shall be strong. And they will do exploits. 
that means you will get things done. That means everything you lay your hands upon to do will prosper. In the name of the Lord, I am not a failure. I am a success story. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Come to that Colossian again, chapter 2, verse 10. And ye are complete in him. If you are complete in him. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principles and powers. That, that means, if you are complete in him, who is the head of all principles and powers, then he has made you to be seated together with him in heavenly places. Far, above principalities and power. If he is the head of all principalities and powers, you are the head of all principalities and powers. Do you know who you are right now? So, you stop allowing the enemy to push you here and there, kick you here and there. You are the son of the almighty God. Amen? Jesus, our chief example, demonstrated that nature, that character. We talked about character early this morning. Character is the composition of all that made you to be who you are. And so, if you don't know who you are, you just be acting and behaving and doing things anyhow. Jesus demonstrated the love of God. He demonstrated leadership equipping. He demonstrated affirmation, discipline. He demonstrated encouragement. Uh, you could see how courageous he was. Go and tell that false. Amen. Go and tell that false. He was fearless. He was undaunted. Jesus demonstrated power over nature. They that do know their God shall be strong. Oh, Moses got to the Red Sea, lifted up the rod, pointed the rod to the sea, and the sea parted. They that do know their God shall do exploit. Joshua was fighting a battle, and it was tough, and then he looked up, son, stand still. They that do know their God. And Paul said, I can do all things. And what are you saying today? I say, what are you saying today? What are you saying to yourself? I can do all things. For as long as you are thinking that that sister can do all things, that brother can do all things, that family can do all things, not you. You will never, never be able to do anything. Look beyond others. Look inward. Look inward. And say to this person, I can do all things. Go in that spirit. I can do all things. Go with that mindset. I can do all things. I am not alone. Jesus is by my side. Jesus is ahead of me. He's making every crooked path straight. I can do all things. And you will do all things. The total man. The total man. The total man. You say, but Pastor, how can I do all things with my situation? Look beyond your situation. You are in that situation because of the way you have been thinking. As he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Change your mindset. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 12, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of the law, that you renew your mind, your mindset, your thought line. Turn it around. Turn it around. And you see great things happening in your life in Jesus' name. When we talk about exploits, then you want to look at every area of your life. There is no way I can get into everything within the time I have. But then begin with your spiritual life. Because you are a spiritual being. Please understand. Until you come to that understanding that you're a spiritual being, you will never be able to get things accomplished.
accomplish God's will. Understand that the physical you is not the real person. This is just the body you need to function on earth. The real you is on the inside of you. You are a spiritual being living in a physical body. So begin with the spiritual part of your life and turn things around for God's glory. I told you already, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the glory of God. You must be born again. And if you're here today, you are still in secret sin. Accommodating sin, tolerating sin. Today, things will turn around for you in Jesus' name. So, beginning with your life, you want to begin to study the scripture. Study. How can I be a total man? Study. How can I be a complete man? How can I be a whole man? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study. Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate there in day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou, hallelujah, shall make thy way, thy way, thy way, you will prosper in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, and then thou shalt have a good success. The total man. The total man. We always tell people not to drink. Right? But today I'm going to tell you to drink. Get drunk. Don't just drink, but, all, but also get drunk. Tell your neighbor, get drunk. Tell your neighbor, get drunk. I love what happened yesterday morning. Some people, I mean, during, during that moment of the fire falling from heaven, some got really drunk. And I saw three brethren over there. Amen. And they were bound together. Amen. They couldn't lose themselves. And all true. I don't know for how long we prayed yesterday. Who knew? I'm sorry? Two hours? For all those period of time, from the time the Holy Ghost bound them together, they couldn't lose themselves. They were just speaking in tongues. This one will put this one here. This one will put this one here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody, get drunk. You said, I cannot pray because you are not drunk with the spirit of the living God. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I saw a brother yesterday, very wonderful brother. Uh, as soon as we started, within five minutes of starting the prayer, the power of God hit him. <laughs> it was just too much for him. Amen. Even people trying to hold him, he was, he was moving all of them together with him. Tell somebody, get drunk. Yes, we know the word. We know the letter. But the Bible says the letter kill it. It is the spirit that gives life. You are struggling with your Christian life because you lack the infilling of the spirit of the living God. You lack the power of the Holy Ghost. That is why we tell people in this church, be filled with the spirit. Get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Then you realize that all the things you've been struggling with becomes easy for you. Because that is the purpose of the Holy Spirit to make your life easy. To teach you all things. To aid you. To strengthen you. To sustain you. To succor you. To guide you. To lead you. To instruct you in righteousness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. And be not drunk with wine. We are in his excess. But be filled with the Spirit. 
be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Now, I told you about studying, but I'm going to go beyond just studying. And please, most of you here, if not all of you, have been to college. Or at least, you went to one school or the other, even if it is elementary school. And you realize that you have different books for different subjects, right? It's not just one book. So, I'm going to talk about, if you're going to be a tochama, get yourself invested into my church. Still like one year old in the Lord when I have read so many about, uh, about um, the second coming of Christ, about the rapture, about demonology, about sanctification, just about one year old, reading books and materials, beginning to study about leadership. And now internet came, YouTube came, and everything came. No more buying cassette. We call the no more just cassette now. You can not just listen, but also see the ministers. Invest into your life. And I know this may offend some people. And I don't care. Praise the Lord. Many of you are feeling that nothing is really happening because you kept eating just the same food again and again and again and again. If all you eat in your life, what, what food do you like eating? Rice. <laughs> Praise God. Yesterday you ate rice. Today you ate rice. Tomorrow you ate rice. Next week you ate rice. What's going to become of you and rice? Praise the Lord. As soon as you, even the thought of rice, the order of it will drive you away. That's why many of you think I am not growing. Not because the church is not doing what we're supposed to do, but because you have limited yourself. You're unlimited. I say you're unlimited. Stretch yourself. Listen to different ministers. If you have the spirit of the Lord, I was very young in the faith. Very, very young in the Lord. One year, two years, three years in the faith. And I get to the bookstore. And I see the book. And the title is very good. And I want to buy the book. And the Spirit of the Lord will say, no, there are errors in that book. Nobody taught me. And there are songs. The Lord will minister to me. Buy it, but there are errors there. And once I get to where, nobody teaching me. Once I get there, the Lord will say, that is it. Mark it, and I will note it. Some of them, I will write some things on those books. So don't say, well, if I listen to other people, if I read, read from other people, uh, I will be contaminated. No, you're already contaminated. Because you went to school, you read different books. You became an engineer, you became a lawyer, you became a doctor, you became whosoever you are by other different authors. Why not bring that into the realm of the spirit and develop yourself and build up yourself and become a total man and be complete in everything? If there is anything I learned from our Father in the Lord is the fact that that man is studious. Up to now, he's still reading and studying. And I will tell you, he's still studying the Bible and reading as if he's preparing for an examination. Why not you? Why not me? Why not you? Why not me? And sometimes it comes up and it tells you, I read this book. I read that book. And here are you. It has, all, it has to be only deeper life. Thank God for deeper life. Amen? But maybe there are some things you didn't get from deeper life you will be able to get from other people. Am I communicating? 